What up guys, Alex here. Um, today, or this evening, I'll be working on the Y body. Uh, not repairing anything, but actually doing a, a bit of a performance upgrade on a component that's been bothering me a little bit. Um, so in my previous video I did about the, the oil, oil change and the oil system setup I have on the, uh, the Black 89 over there, that I also did the whole undercarriage uh, exploration. I briefly mentioned that video that I had a problem of trust or confidence with the brake setup on the wide body. Long story short, my one successful track day, I took the wide body out on, and again, it's HPDE. It's not gonna be a real competition or competitive track day. It's just more, you know, getting out there and getting your tires warmed up and having some fun, just non-competitive. But anyways, it was a really uh, technical track with lots of elevation changes. And throughout that experience of that day, uh, this was at the Z Nationals with Z1 Motorsports when they hosted this event, um, I lost uh, confidence in the brakes, so a brake, brake confident loss. And what that generally means is that uh, as a performance brake setup for a car or any braking uh, performance for a car, uh, when you're expecting a certain result out of your uh, component, and it doesn't necessarily have to be brakes, it could be a clutch or it could be you know, differential, whatever, or even tires, but in this particular focus I'm talking about is brakes. Uh, I lost uh, confidence in what I was expecting to feel or have uh, you know, the result of my uh, experience with that track day. So uh, in summary, what was going on is because of the, the elevation changes, because of the tight cornering of this technical track, it didn't feel like the brakes were up to the task in a responsive set. Uh, no, they never got heat fade. I didn't feel like the brakes were getting hot. It was just they weren't as, um, I guess, as aggressive or responsive to the power weight ratio of the wide body. So um, if we were to compare what I have in the wide body versus the 89, uh, the 89 has the CTSV second gen brake setup, which is uh, six pot Brembos up front and four pot Brembos in the rear. Um, whereas in this car, the wide body, I have the CTSV first gen, which are a big four pot uh, caliper setup in the front. And then in the rear is I actually have the R34 GTR uh, two pot Brembos in the rear. While both setups are actually a well-balanced setup, I, I don't like the way the brakes felt on the wide body for what I just explained a moment ago. Um, so, and if you're wondering like, hey, why didn't you do the six pot Brembos in the first place? Why did you choose the four? Well, there was a thought process behind that. Let me explain it real quick. And again, I've already explained it before, but we're gonna do it again. Uh, on the 89 here, I have uh, 18 inch wheels, as you can see, these Motigi wheels. And, you know, these rotors are the 370Z Akibono, you know, equipped rotors, which are a 14 inch rotor, 14 inch front, 14 inch rear. Um, so needless to say, it's a very tight fit. Matter of fact, if you come with me over here and we look down together, you will see like even the rears are an extremely tight fit uh, caliper wheel setup. And you know, you can definitely see how tight that is. Um, but you know, these are 18s and on the wide body, there's are 17 inch BBS wheels. So in my mind, I thought, well, if, hey, if I had a challenge in overall fitment, for the six pot Brembos and the second gen CTSV, I don't foresee a 17 inch wheel being able to accommodate the same wheel, or I'm sorry, same uh, brake package. Out of curiosity, I went and measured the barrel inner diameter between you know, my 18 inches and my 17 inch wheels. So uh, surprisingly, the 17, or I'm sorry, the 18s, they came in at a measurement inner diameter of uh, 15 and three quarter inch inner diameter measurement, but you know, inside barrel. Surprisingly, the 17s, they came in at a measurement of 16 and 3 eighths. And you're wondering, wow, how can a 17 inch wheel have a larger inside diameter barrel measurement than an 18 inch? It blew my mind. Well, if you look here, if we come down and we look at the barrel, this wheel, I mean, they're a really good quality wheel, these, these uh, Motigi wheels. They're heavy, but they're made for aggressive, like drifting and autocross type racing. But, uh, if you look at the design here, yes, you got your uh, three inch lip right here. It actually tapers upward from this black part. So from the polished aluminum, it tapers upwards and, and it actually goes inward as far as diameter. So you can kind of, 
I'm not sure if you can see it, but you can maybe see it right there. Uh, from here to there, it actually tapers. And it looks like I lose a height of maybe like an inch to an inch and a quarter that you know in that vicinity. So that's why these were a challenge, and that kind of like made my mind think differently. And on the BBS wheels, those three-piece wheels, it's a straight, just normal barrel. There's no there's no step on the on the reverse of those gold magnesium centers. So, anyways, um, so out of curiosity, I bought one CTSV six pot Brembo just to mock it up and see, you know, how it how it would fit. And to my surprise, with the brackets that you have to get, and again, these brackets for are just for an S13. Uh, I'll explain the compatibility here in a minute, but let me show right here first. Um, when I mocked it up, you can see that the caliper barely kissed the inside of the wheel. That's not good, right? You can't have, you can't have the uh, caliper rubbing on the inside of the wheel, but it means that you can simply grind a little bit or sand off a little bit off the top half of these brimbos. Now, if you're thinking like, hey, that's not safe, man. Well, it's fine. Um, on the 89, I already did it uh, a lot, actually. And it's been on there for the better of 10 years. And it's been fine, no problems. I've taken the car in many track day events and they held it just fine. So I'm not worried. Um, unfortunately, you know, these are powder coated from this uh, new Gion company. So, you know, when I sand this off a little bit, they'll I'll have to, you know, reshoot, a little, add a little paint right there and make it look good. But uh, going back to the brackets here, just for your awareness, um, you know, the, the, any, the Z31, S13, Actually, all of the S chassis, so S13, 14, and 15, I even, I even think the S12, uh, Z31, Z32, and Z33, they all share the same uh, spacing for the caliper ear mounts, right? This is, it's actually this part right here on the bracket. Um, so when you're, when you're looking for a BBK, a big brake kit for your Z31, uh, ideally, you want to find a kit that's for an S13 specifically. And the reason why that is, is that the Z31 and S13 both have iron knuckles or spindles up front that are the ear mounts are iron, whereas on the Z32, and obviously the S14 is iron as well, but just focus on the, Z, on the S13 for you know, ease of, of understanding. But on the, on the Z32, the ear mounts for the calipers on the Z32 are, are aluminum. And even though the spacing, like from here to here, are the same, the thickness of the bracket, or the thickness of the of the ear mounts, are thicker on the Z32. So aluminum is definitely a, a softer, lighter metal. And being that it's softer, lighter metal, in most applications, you're going to find that they will substitute thickness uh, to to come up with the strength differences between a thinner iron versus aluminum. So that's why if you compare uh, a Z32, I think the uh, I think the 350Z is also aluminum. But if you look at those, you'll see that the ear mounts are actually Quite a bit thicker between the two. I think there's like a 10 to 15 millimeter uh, difference in thickness. So, uh, so if you were to buy this this adapter, um, you'll notice on, you know if you buy it for the Z32, this raised portion right here to offset the caliper for this guy would actually be a bit taller to accommodate the offset difference. And then the bolts in this case, the long bolts, this guy would actually be longer to accommodate as well. So, when you're choosing a BBK for your Z31, make sure you uh, designate, if applicable, if possible, a uh, S13, because it'll be the same thickness between ear mounts. So uh, so that's it for the explanation of the why. So in today's video, what we're gonna do, um, we're gonna go ahead and, we're not doing the full break right now at this very moment. This is gonna be a two day video, all stretched into, you know, compiled into one. The reason why I can't do it all right now is because I don't have the rear brackets yet. I ordered them like a week ago, and unfortunately the seller hasn't shipped them out yet. I did contact him and he apologized, he's just behind. No big deal. But the reason why I'm executing on pulling out the brakes right now is because I already sold the brakes, uh, the calipers, the rotors, the pads, everything, I already sold them. And I, you know, I don't wanna have the guy wait unnecessarily. So I figured it was okay to go ahead and pull them out keep the car in the lift and we can finish the brakes when, uh, when the, the rear bracket comes in. But for the video, it'll all be compiled under one, one video. So without further ado, let me continue showing the, the setup here. Uh, so, yep, this is the, uh, the front rotor, or I'm sorry, the front uh, caliper. Uh, this is actually the front passenger and the, the driver is still in the box. Here are the rears. Um, 
all these are powder coated from this company that puts that assembles the kit together. So these are these are big, definitely a big uh, four pot Brembo's for a rear. You know what's funny? If you compare this, and I wish I had one to show you, but these are bigger than the Z32 front calipers, <laughs> and then these are for the rear. That's just kind of funny that uh, a later model caliper is actually bigger than the fronts for the z32 just just funny um so here are the pads i'm choosing to run these are the uh, power stop extreme i think these are the z26 series yeah the z26 they're a carbon fiber uh infused or enforced uh brake pad there is a specific uh braking instruction as you can see here let's get the camera there um you know five aggressive uh, decelerations from 40 to 10 five more from 35 to five and then drive slowly to cool down your brakes for five minutes total you have to do that to bed in the the the, the pads correctly to the rotor that's a, a requirement otherwise you might get chatter or uh, undesirable uh braking performance um and then if you, if you caught this right here these are high temp uh stickers uh decals they're vinyl cut that you can place over the face surface of your calipers to you know, make it appear to be you know the Brembo or how they were powder coated from like the factory. So on the uh, on the my eighty nine here, you can already see that I applied those same uh, decals. These have been on there since like twenty twelve or twenty thirteen, and they haven't had any sort of uh, quality issue over the many years and washes and whatnot. So uh, just saying, it's perfectly fine to do it this way. But I'm happy that these come pre-powder coated versus rattle canned. That's pretty cool. So that's that explanation of the calipers and pads and the bracketry. And then here are the rotors. These are the R1 Concepts uh, rotors, drilled, drilled and slotted. Uh, I'm a huge fan of R1 Concepts. Uh, yeah, these are a one piece. They're pretty heavy. You can get like a Z1 Motorsport two piece rotor set up and they would save you a lot of weight. Um, I figure for the type of driving I do where it's mostly street, uh, I'm not really concerned about unsprung weight and all that fun stuff. These are fine. Uh, R1 Concepts, they're, uh, they're definitely an up and coming brand. They, I've been aware of them and been buying from them for the, the better 20 years now. Um, they're definitely not an eBay cheap brand like China stuff. I mean, they're, they're a high performance and good value uh, rotor. So if in doubt, uh, you want to get new rotors and you want performance oriented rotors they get good r1 concepts they have blanks meaning non-drilled slotted they have just slotted they have just drilled and they also have a i forgot they call it like a wave design so you can get various designs from them so uh, again these are the 350z uh, 14 inch fronts and these are the 350z 14 inch rears and you can you can see the differences there the diameters are the same but if you look at the back you got this uh, uh, profile here to accommodate the uh, the parking brake, the drum brake. Um, so that's how that's what's different between the Z31 and Z32 is that the parking brake on the Z32 is is a drum brake that expands just just for your parking brake, not for your actual brake pedal brake. Whereas in the Z31, your rear caliper is a mechanical caliper, which means it has a dual function spring loaded actuated arm. As you pull the handbrake, it pulls this actuator that locks your locks up your rear pads. Um, so that's why a lot of Z31 guys struggle to get bigger brakes in the rear because you have to have an e-brake. If you don't, you're kind of asking for it. So uh, for both cars, I have the subframe swap done from the S chassis utilizing the Z32 uh, axles uprights, the aluminum uprights and the hubs and the whole drum brake assembly. So that's how you're, I'm able to get away for using uh, bigger brakes easily anyways. Um, and in this box, these are old calipers from actually my Nismo Juke. Uh, we're going to use these as uh, stand-ins for when I unbolt the CTSV4. I'm sorry, yeah, CTSV4 pots, and we'll just use these so that there's not like a dripping brake line leak scenario. Um, on the Juke that we have, the Nismo Juke, I went ahead and uh, got the 350s. I'm sorry, 370Z 14-inch rotors on the on the Juke, and I put the uh, 370Z Akibono. Uh, calipers. I got them for a steal of a deal and they actually just bolt straight up to the juke. Um, the only modification you have to do is clearly deleting the uh, cutting or deleting the dust shield 
but more specifically for the front, you have to shim or offset the, uh, the front rotor to have it line up perfectly centered on the caliper. The rears are 100% bolt on, no modifications other than that dust shield. So anyway, that's the explanation of what we got going on. Uh, let's go ahead. I got the car positioned on the, on the lift already. So we'll go ahead and get the car lifted and buzz off all four wheels and get the calipers removed and uh, get ready for a shipment for this customer or this buyer of these calipers. But additionally, I want to take the opportunity just to compare, you know, first gen to second gen and you know what I'm going from to. So let's go ahead and raise up the car. A little update in the car. Um, I haven't been driving it simply because it's been cold lately, but this car is driving so well. Um, the performance is outstanding. Like I said in a previous video, making 1,244 wheel horsepower at max boost at 28 pounds. I, when I drive the car, I don't, I don't always run that high boost because that's like insanely, uh, like dangerous if you ask me. But you know, it's just the fact that this car can make that kind of horsepower is insane. Um, but it's been driving so well. I'm really happy that it's just stable. I think the only tuning issue I got is just the cold start. It, it seems to run a bit uh, rich at cold start, richer than I would like it to be. So it's just one of those things that as a tuner, you just work through it and slowly, uh, you know, figure out how to lean it out during cold start. But that's really the only outstanding issue in the car, which is not even that detrimental. It really just means I have to uh, change the oil more often than I would like to. Um, so let's get started. Uh, let's get these Brembo's removed. Um, so we're just going to use my impact, my electric impact. Uh, believe it or not, I do like using my air impact, my pneumatic. It's just been using that for so long. When I moved out to Tennessee, I didn't have my air compressor. I left that behind. So I just went ahead and bought these uh, Milwaukee's. Um, if you notice, kind of just taking a pause here. This Milwaukee driver is a 3 8 drive. And the one that I'm using right here is actually a three quarter drive, if I can get it off, a three quarter drive uh, impact driver. And the reason why I didn't go to a half inch is because there was like no price difference between a three quarter and a half. So I figure I'll get the three quarter and just step it down to a half drive and then have that much more power for braking power. You know, I forget the actual terminology, but you know, uh, removal power. So uh, let's go ahead and get these zipped off. And just like any other Nissan, it's typically a 21. So these uh, BBS wheels, as we're kind of working through this, um, these were custom made for this car. I did a lot of measuring to get uh, BBS USA to make these. It's a three-piece wheel, a legit three-piece wheel. Um, you can see that through you know, the bolt pattern here. Uh, this bolt pattern holds the outer barrel there's an inner barrel and the third piece is this magnesium center um, it took about eight nine months to get these because while the barrels were readily available in the states at bbs usa in the atlanta georgia area the magnesiums were actually made in germany and it was just on a list not necessarily like a back order list but on a waiting list to be made so that's why it took so long to get these but Now I already had this wheel off, that's why these nuts are breaking off relatively easily. Um, had to mock things up. That wheel almost just fell off, that would have been bad. So let me uh, set the impact down while I this wheel. I forget that these wheels are kind of side heavy versus most wheels would just kind of gently wait for you to take them off. So we'll just leave that guy there. All right, so there's the Brimbos. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get my lugs set aside here. If I wanna, I wanna show you something interesting. So, you know, I got these wheels. They didn't come with center caps or the beep or any lug nuts like they used to. But I went on eBay and found these genuine BBS lug nuts. 
uh, 12i125. So it's, you know they had the same taper, uh, these Acorn style lug nuts, same taper as the BBS wheels require. BBS wheels generally have a, a different taper for the lugs. Um, I think I, in this case, I do think it's a 45 or a 60, I can't remember. But I've seen people when I was doing research choose the, the wrong lug and end up uh, ruining the magnesium. So it's really important to get the right taper on BBS wheels. Um, so in order to, you know, the caliper is just two bolts that's on the back you know, of the uh, spindle there. But um, I do need to remove the rotors, these 350Z 12.75 inch rotors. I do need to remove these as well because that's part of the package. Um, so to do that, I have to remove this wheel spacer, uh, this 25 millimeter wheel spacer. And if you're wondering, why do I have a spacer? It's simply to clear the face or the, you know, the, uh, yeah, the face of the caliper. Otherwise it would hit and grind. So, um, so let me get a 19 mil to remove that. And I'm, I don't know if my impact set for my 19s would actually fit that spacer. I think I had to use, unfortunately, a regular socket but we'll see i can't remember no these fit that's good i don't like using my you know chrome plated sockets because they definitely crack i actually cracked one the other day because i was impatient so let's just zip these off real quick Spacer off, call that a spacer adapter to be um, accurate here. Spacers are just generally what you would slip on. Adapters are, are what you bolt on. All right, so that one's, as you can see, these are called free floating rotors. That's what like the Z32 and 350, all modern cars generally use free floating rotors. The 84 through 86 uh, turbos will use a bolt on style. 84 389 also use that same style bolt on rotor where the rotor actually bolts onto the back of the the hub and it's there's very limited methodologies to go to a big uh brake kit so uh, a lot of people like to go to the 87 389 turbo hubs which is what's behind here because it allows you to use anything z32 and above for uh upgrades so let's go ahead and zip off the other wheel switch my socket Take off my center cap. Nice and tight fit in there. All right, make sure camera angle's good. And again, I had this uh, wheel off just the other day, so I didn't put them back on super tight. All right, let me get these lugs set aside before I Take off the last one. Okay, all right. You stay put. Okay, we'll set the impact right here. These uh, BBS wheels are pretty light. As big as they are, they're super light. All right, there they are. Let's get the Adapter off. takes care of that spacer and let's go ahead and take a look at the rotor looks good everything looks good you can see the big four pot brimbos there um, I want to take off the rear wheels as well before we get taken off uh, calipers just to kind of help get things done in a assembly aligned fashion. So 
Look how deep this dish is. I mean, we're talking, I don't know, what was that, an eight, eight inch dish there? It's so deep, it's so cool. Now these wheels, with their aggressive offsetting here, are definitely side uh, faced heavy. So I wanna make sure that I don't let the wheel drop and accidentally put a ding on my wheel lip there. So I can just do this carefully. All right. Set the impact down kind of gently. Pull off the wheel. And as you can see, you know, not as big as the fronts, obviously. This is the, like I said, the R34 GTR uh, rear Brembo is the R2 pot. But what's cool, and I'll be able to show you once I get it pulled out, is that there's two cool things about this. Um, this is the same design as the front calipers. Also the same, you know, a design and appearance as a 350Z uh, rear Brembo um, calipers. Now, um, the th rear 350Z calipers do not bolt up to the you know Z31 chassis and S13 or S14 chassis. They just don't bolt up. It's a different pattern for whatever reason. Uh, so this one from the R34 GTR, it straight up bolts up to the car. There's no bracket needed. And that's what's really cool about these. Um, the only downside is just the, you know, the rotor is not a super big rotor. I believe this to be a 12 inch, I can't remember. I think it's a 12 inch rotor if I remember right. But there's no bracketry. Um, so I just gotta unbolt it when we get to it. So let me go take off the other wheel now. Oops, let's get that lug. I forgot that it was in there. All right, it's kind of tight on this side. Not terrible. All right, so as you can see, um, everything is pretty clean on this car. I try my best to keep care of it, even though it's constantly being worked on as I'm working through kinks and bugs. But all things considered, everything's coming along pretty well as far as learning the car and, and gaining trust. So one of the last things I did while working on this car actually, um, I went ahead and did the, the rear hub bearings uh, for the, the Z32 twin turbo hubs back here. Um, I actually got genuine Nissan OEM, uh, you know, the bearings, the hub bearings, and they weren't cheap, I'll tell you that. They were, uh, I don't know, I think it was uh, $200 per side because they come in this assembly and you have to like take it to the press and uh, uh, remove the old one and press on the new one. So it's definitely a procedure. Uh, it takes time, but you have to pull everything apart to get to it. But I had no idea what the mileage was from these hubs. I, I didn't want to just run it unknowingly with high mileage. I wanted to make sure I got new bearings. So there it is. So let's go ahead and get these uh, these calipers removed. We'll start with the the front passenger. We'll start there. Um, and like I said, I had these off just the other day, so it won't be much of a challenge. I think on some of these, I actually kind of might have just loosely hand tightened them. Um, but as I told you before, I'm going to be uh, using the my old Juke uh, calipers to just bolt the line to because I don't want to have a puddle underneath here. It's going to drip a little bit, but I'm not ready to put the calipers on quite yet. So if just for today, right now, pull off the calipers, put the, uh, the brakes from the juke just as a plug, if you will, and then we'll, uh, we'll get to putting on the CTSV six pots probably tomorrow or whenever I get the rear brackets in the mail. So um, I believe these are a 16 millimeter uh, socket. So let's go ahead and get that. And like I said, um, my funnels are going to be sliding everywhere. Let's get these moved. Kind of had a rearrangement thing going on. 
So 16 is what I said. Take the 16s and yeah, I'm not gonna use an extension. I think that'll be fine. So uh, one thing, I was watching a YouTube video uh, of a guy working on he does, uh, you know, those funny videos called customer states and it's all these funny things mechanics discover while working at the job. I saw in a video a guy who was using these S hooks to hang their calipers because you never want to hang a caliper by the uh, by the brake line itself, the hose, because that'll cause the hose to stretch and you might, you know, get a hose failure. So uh, what I bought on Amazon were these, uh, I don't know if you can see them in the video, these little S hooks, little steel S hooks. They're for like uh, your cast iron pots that you would hang in, in your fancy pantsy kitchen. So I got three different, I got two different sizes, sorry. I got three inch and a two inch. So the idea is you would loop it. I don't know if you can see, there we go. You get your S hook here, you loop it there and you're able to hang it, um, you know, somewhere on the car, like your sway bar or somewhere. So that way it's not creating strain on your uh, on your brake line, so we're gonna we're definitely gonna use that for these. So before I unbolt the caliper, the Brembos, let's get these hung, and we're gonna hang it right on the the tension rod there, the adjustable tension rod, as you can see. Um, it might actually go a little higher actually because of the distance there for the brake line to hit. So. Yeah, I think that'll work just like that. It's hanging if you can see so um, I'm gonna go ahead and unbolt the brake line uh, One thing I forgot to do is turn the key on That way I could uh, rotate the wheel. Let's see if I can do that Okay, good. It's a little easier to do that way. So the brake it's a banjo fitting and I wonder Yeah, I think it's a 13 or 14 mil So I'm gonna grab both I can't just confirm it in that angle so we'll grab both oops 13 and 14 it looks to be a 14 um i left it over here yeah 14 i'm guessing it's the 14 perfect all right so we're gonna go ahead and crack it and then I think I had a little plug. Sorry, you can't see. I had a little plug in the the other calipers there. So let's get that pulled out. And like I said, I'm just gonna do this as to prevent a drainage, you know, issue. I don't want a puddle on the floor. Um, yeah, so we'll go ahead. But you gotta make sure that if you do this like this, like my idea of, you know, let me take off my gloves. I don't want my gloves soaking. Uh, you want to make sure you get both crush washers on a banjo. So just carefully, slowly. You know, there's no rush here, right? So go ahead and uh, Sorry, it's kind of hard to see at the moment. Come on. Let me uh, take it off the hook real quick because that's presenting a challenge as far as angles. There we go. So the Juke actually uses uh, a banjo style uh, setup as well. Let me... Uh, that's the angle there of the banjo that's causing a little bit of fighting. You can see I'm losing a lot of brake fluid right now. This is what I'm trying to avoid. You gotta get that crush gasket or washer on there. All right, so. Come on. Should be the same pitch. Uh, M10 by 1.0. It's like the common pitch all right there it goes it's just fighting me a little bit um but the, other than you know not wanting a mess with uh brake fluid everywhere 
you do not want your uh, reservoir to go completely empty. If that happens, if you drain it down to zero on your brake master reservoir, you have to, the way to do it correctly is you have to remove the, uh, the brake master and do another bench bleed to get all the, uh, all the bubbles out of the brake master or you'll always be faced with uh, in like brake performance issues, like not consistently feeling, you know, you'll always feel kind of spongy. So that worked out pretty well. Uh, this is a really stiff uh, SS braided line there. So it kind of fought me a little bit, but you get the idea that worked out pretty well. So we'll just leave that hanging until I'm ready for the big pot or big six pot Brembo's. All right, so like I said, these are a 16 millimeter. I think I'm good to put my gloves back on. Um, so while I'm unbolting this, I wanna to explain to you guys, there's a, a lot of different uh, brake kits out there for the S chassis or Z32. Um, I think prior to the CTSV, I would say that, I always say that CTSV is the most popular because it's, they're pretty priced price effective they're pretty cheap cheap in a good way not like cheap like junk you know but um but cheap in a in a good way but before that there was like the evo eight nine brimbos were actually a bit the maybe a hair smaller than the ctsv otherwise pretty much the same um i think there's a kit for using the gtr r35 brimbos which are relatively the same size as the CTSV six pot, but they're expensive, a lot more money. Um, there's also like SRT eight front uh, Brembos, which are pretty beefy and big. They're big, they look good, but they're almost like too big in the sense you're gonna have wheel fitment problems for sure. So I wouldn't recommend looking into the SRT eight front Brembos. They're just big. Um, I think the most sized appropriate like size accommodating six pots are the porsche brimbos i forget which model and year and then also you know these ctsv six pots we're going to put on there i don't know if there's any other smaller six pots that will be you know sized for 18 inch or even in this case 17 inch wheels but all right so slip off the caliper and you can tell once I flip it over here, let's put this little cap in there for now. But you can tell these pads have like no mileage on them at all. Barely any miles on them. So if you look at the bracketry here, um, the bracketry is the same type of modification you have to do to accommodate the, uh, the six spots. You basically have to grind some of the webbing in the back so that uh, you know the bolt can be threaded on there um, so these are what you call a a flat faced uh, brake adapter and these are what you call a step um, to me they're all the same it just depends on you know who you buy it from I kind of like these better though because I think they're easier to work with but just you know my opinion um, but yeah if you check this out guys let me uh, make some room here put these back i don't want to get brake parts or brake fluid on the brake fluid will actually will eat paint or powder coat so just make sure you're keeping your hands clean when you're handling it but what i wanted to show you was the size difference between the two first gen and second gen so check this out we'll do back first so here you can see you know these are uh, probably good, probably good 20%, 25% bigger dimensionally. It doesn't mean, you know, they're, they, they, sometimes that size dimension doesn't really matter. It's more of the, the piston orientation. Um, and you can see like, I'll, I'll pull out a pad here in a minute, but you can see where the pad is going to be much larger than the, uh, the four pot. Those are still pretty big pads, all things considered, but let's take a look at the, pad here so you can see what I'm talking about 
and I'll just I'll leave all shrink wrap together. But check that out. I mean, can you see that? How much bigger these pads are? So the bigger the pad, the larger the sweep and torque, like applied leverage torque that's going to be on the rotor as you're as you're braking. So this is what I'm looking for in this car. Um, pretty excited to have a well-balanced performance brake setup like I do in the 89. And it, the 89 has the same brake master, same, same booster, same everything. So they should feel identical in terms of overall performance. But let's take a look at the front now. So you can see just like how much bigger the six pots are versus the four pots but it's not a, it's not a knock against the four pots these are amazing calipers it i guess i just don't like the way they feel is all so um yeah so that's what we're gonna i'll keep the bolts down here i guess but yeah that's what we're looking at replacing um let me uh continue getting the the calipers off and i'd be happy to show the difference between the rears in this case and show you what i'm up to on that um there's like a little plug came out. Okay, but let's let's now compare the the rotors here. So this is the same brand R1 Concepts. This is the uh, 350Z track rotors. These are a uh, 12.75 or 76 inch rotor setup in terms of diameter, and these are a 14, as I said earlier. So check that out. Let's get a tape measure. So 12 and three quarter, 14. And it visually it's like, you can see it just side by side, how much bigger these are. So as I'm measuring, uh, let's make sure I do it perfectly centered. So you start from that point and go center to that. And then, uh, so it's exactly, exactly 14 inch. Yeah, I'm going to flip this backwards so it'll be easier to measure because the offset's kind of different there. So let's see, right there ish. So you can kind of see it's like, you know, essentially 12 and three quarters. So quite a, quite a step up overall. And then since I've got the tape measure out, let's measure the pads and see what we got for pad length. Um, so the pads back here, these are a five inch length pad. The depth or the width of the pad, it's kind of hard to see in the camera, but these are gonna be roughly a two and a half inch uh, depth engagement. And I, I measured these the other day. I know they're a seven inch length. So these are a seven inch, I'm sorry, seven and a half inch corrected. And the depth is a roughly the same, two and a half inch. Let's see if there's any higher points. Yeah, so it kind of dips down to a possible two and three quarters of what I saw right there. But yeah, these are definitely a bigger pad, 100%. So they'll definitely do their job as far as added leverage and grip. All right, so let's get the uh, let's get the other one off real quick. A little less talking maybe. And then I'm um, watching the battery on my GoPro. It's at uh, 27%. Um, so admittedly, when I took this off uh, the other day for mocking up purposes, I actually rounded off the head of the bolt for whatever reason. I don't think I had the socket on correctly when I had my impact. So I already went to the hardware store for the guy and bought new bolts. So I'll show that in a minute just to show good character here. I'm not gonna send the guy some rounded off head bolts. That wouldn't be very cool of me at all. So I'll get this plug off. All right. So we'll do the same thing over here. Um, I'll just kind of set this down for now. So I'm gonna get that 14 millimeter. Get that buzzed off. Okay. Okay. Drippy drip. 
Oh yeah, let me take off my gloves. I, it's one thing I hate about working on cars is like your glove scenario. Um, I tend to wear gloves a lot, but when you're working with fluids, these cotton dipped, nitrile dipped gloves will soak up anything and then what's the point your hands are getting covered. So normally when I work with fluids, I just go barehanded. I don't, I don't really like latex gloves because they tend to rip so easily. I don't know if you guys agree with me or not. But let's get this uh, banjo bolt on there. Dropped it. All right. Oops. Sorry for the fumbling. Good so far. Okay. And I just want to kind of get it hand tight just to stop the leak. And then got my little hooky hook here. And that's pretty awesome. I'm glad I saw that video because that's a really brilliant idea. Let me possibly just kind of curve it around here. We'll put it on a tie rod actually. There we go. See that? There's no, really no tension. Let me bring it up a little higher. So there's no tension on the hose. It's resting on the, uh, on that hook there. Let me get my hands wiped off. So I did lose some brake fluid as you saw, but not enough to concern me to say, hey, you better go in there and fill it back up for what you lost. Not quite, but if it was to be any more, like you know a good amount then i would be worried but let's let's get this caliper buzzed off and then i'll get the battery replaced on the gopro so let me show you the bolt i had accidentally um rounded off and I, I don't know what happened i think i think what the problem was i had uh the socket not on all the way and i hit it with my impact and you know that happened helps if you had the the ratchet in the right way. Come on. There it goes. Alright, that's one bolt. Let me, uh, towel down here but yeah like I said I'm not gonna send these guy the guy the the bolts unfortunately I kind of damaged them but more so that the fact that as I mentioned earlier the ear mounts on the z31 to z32 are different the guy who bought my kit this brake kit here is a z32 owner he lives in Hawaii so I want to make sure that you know sending stuff over an ocean that he gets what he paid for and not a uh, you know a discrepancy to where he's mad at me for something you know that I could have been avoided so let's uh let's make sure I take care of him correctly here I'm not sure what's going on this rotor's about to fall off there we go just the weight of the uh, rotor was starting to fall sideways So same as before, it just slides off, just do it nice and slow. So there's the other one. Great looking calipers, they really are. But let me show you that bolt. If you see that right there, I that was my mistake. I must have not had the socket on there completely when I hit it yesterday or the day before with an impact. So, you know, little human error, you know, mistakes happen how you own up to it, how you address it. So just to show kind of the dignity that you know, I'm referring to is I went to the hardware store and got them a, a bag of new bolts. I didn't know, uh, I don't know what length, like I'm in three different size lengths here. 
for him to choose which one will work. So this is what's going to him. Um, but yeah, so let's get that other rotor off. And then I need to change the battery. <laughs> Um, before I change the battery, I want to show you something. So on this, this is my, uh, this is my hub that I retrofitted, adapted a, um, a speed sensor. This is actually a 370Z wheel sensor, like ABS token ring sensor. And this allows me to monitor uh, front wheel speed for traction control. And it works. <laughs> I can't believe that it actually, it actually works. I got traction control on an 86Z with a twin turbo V8. It's just, it's a crazy thought process here, you know, but uh, it works well. But yeah, let me change out the battery real quick and we'll get started on the rear, do a little summary wrap up and call it a night. So hold on a second. All right, got the battery replaced and I went ahead and wiped up the mess there. Um, so we'll go ahead and get the rear Brembo's pulled off. I need to see what size they are for bolts. So it looks to be a 17 and the banjo banjo also looks to be another 14 it looks like so let me get that i wonder if i can use my speed ratchet since it's kind of a tighter fit back there so we'll try that but i'll grab the sockets just in case so uh, the 14 is already over there but we'll get a 17 here and we'll get my 14 and uh, 17 speed ratchet. See if that will do us any good. All right, because these bolts are the factory bolts and you don't need a bracket, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, keep these bolts and he'll just use his uh, factory Z32 uh, bolts as well. So, yep, that's all good. Um, let's get the, the other brakes so we can hang those. Got my cool little S hooks. And by the way, these are on Amazon. Just look up um, S hook. I got 30 of them for seven bucks. Uh, these can be all sorts of useful. I'll tell you what, this is, these are gonna come in handy. I'm glad I watched that video and discovered these. So it'll definitely be helpful for when I do stuff like this. All right, um, I'm gonna bring that 14 socket just in, just in case. Okay, and we will get the caliper hanging right now. So where is a good spot to hang the caliper? Um, the sway bar looks good. There. Yeah, that's good. That's good for now. Might hang it differently when we get to it. So as I said before, let me get my gloves off. Cool. Okay. And here comes the drips. And just like the front, these are a banjo bolt. Uh, fitting M10 by 1.0, pretty standard on Nissan, and surprisingly the same for the uh, CTSV as well, which is, makes it so much easier for this swap. So, got those, and let's get the caliper. Kind of fumbling here as I said earlier but I'm just trying to avoid dropping stuff and making a big mess when I'm trying to do things methodically all right okay So that's tight, tight enough to not have a leak occurring while the car will be 
hanging. So watch this. I'm gonna hook the S here onto the coil spring actually. Check that out. That is pretty cool. Uh, let me get my hands, paper towel, cleaned up real quick. All right, so let's take a look at that again. That's why I like those S-hooks. They just, they're so versatile. You can hang the caliper there and not have to worry about it. All right, so that's loose. And you can see how easy this is. I like these Brimbos because they make life really easy for pad management, you know, servicing with new pads. Where's that lower bolt? Hmm. I might need to get an actual ratchet. We'll see. Nope, we got it. All right, so like I said, these are the OEM Nissan bolts here for the brake calipers, which is really cool about these R34 Brembos. These bolts straight up. So I'll be keeping those for the next, for the rears. All right, so yeah, they're itty bitty compared to what's going on in the car, but Comparing it to the Z32s, these are much bigger than the uh, Z32 rears. But I'll, I'll compare. I'll compare it when I get the other one off. Give me a minute to get these rotors and the other caliper off. These are obviously easier. So there they are. And you can tell these are like new. Like they're barely even worn. Um, and there's the parking drum brake, if you guys were curious. I mean, obviously, Z32 guys knows what, the, what this is about. Um, but yeah, this is the hub right here. And then the, uh, the bearing is actually on the backside. Like, that's how it, how it bolts is on the backside. And, uh, and you can see here that there was a, a dust shield that you have to cut off to accommodate. And this is a good example of the aluminum ear. So these are the ear mounts, as I was referring to earlier. These are aluminum, and these are uh, thicker than they would be if these were iron because aluminum softer, they need more material to be as a strong or equally as strong. So that's why uh, these are a bit thicker. But yeah, these are, uh, that's the Z32 rear setup there. Um, so let me go put this rotor with the, the other one. And again, check this out. Well, let me get the other rotor. We'll compare it all at once. Go from there. So let's get, what I need, and I'll just leave that stuff there in my gloves. I'm gonna just knock this out real quick. However, I do need to get that other caliper. So I'll grab it. Um, I'm definitely, as we were talking here, definitely grateful to have a lift. Um, can't really express how fortunate I am and how grateful I am of where I'm at in my life. Having the ability to work on your own cars with your own lift not only makes it you know go by faster, but with my back problems that I have, I don't have to be you know breaking my back just to get things done. So I'm really appreciative of that. So we'll go ahead and hang the caliper there, adjust the camera, and get ready for a small mess. Paper towel. All right, so same as the other side, banjo bolt it. Okay, got that loose. Can hear the dripping already. And then I'll just set this up here for an, a minute. Hope you guys can see okay. I know it's kind of dark over here. I just 
this one's going by pretty smooth. Okay, let's uh, tighten it up so no more leaks. So it's hanging, that's good. And we'll go ahead and bump the bolts off of this guy. My hands are covered, let's get my hands wiped off before I start grabbing tools. Or the caliper. You don't want uh, brake fluid on your hands are very long. It starts to burn. Um, not feeling anything right now, but if I don't wash my hands here in a few, it's gonna start burning. Um, okay, and a little uh, lesson here is a little tip. When you're unbolting things and, you know, whether it be calipers, starter, anything that's like multiple series of bolts, um, you might want to consider loosening, you know, the majority of them before you start taking them out because like, for example, if I go ahead and remove one completely and then, then I go crack the other one loose, you you might see the caliper like fling upwards and smack something. So it's always a good idea to have the bolts all in, but loosen it. As, and it goes, uh, especially for like axles when you have, uh, you know, four to six bolts for your axles. So just kind of a tip there. I don't know if you just saw that I did that or not, but I got it down to where it's like, ingrained in my head to do that so sorry it's kind of fighting me a little bit Like, like one more thread that's on there. I'm trying to get it, get it off. I must have a little bit of rust or something on the bolt, a little oxidation. There it goes. All right. So I got that loose. And just as before, I want to just carefully slide it out. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the rubber since I'm here. It's pretty lightweight. All right, so set those there. Here's the rotors. So let's compare the rotors while I'm here. So you can see, you know, side by side. Uh, let's measure these real quick. So I'm, I'm con if I remember correctly, these are a 12 inch rear. Yeah, so 12 inches. Um, the Z32, I believe, are 11 inch or maybe 10 and a half. I think they're 11 inch, and the Z31s are 10 and a half in the rear. So even even though these kind of look smaller, they're not small. I mean, they're still rather you know, big and larger than the, the stock ones. And then here's that, you know, in comparison, the 14 inch rear. And you can see how Nissan is pretty consistent with its design of the uh, the drum for the parking brake. It's all the same. And, you know, like I said earlier, I have the, the Akibono brake set up using the same rotors on the Juke. And yes, the Juke uses a, the same parking brake configuration, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so these will 100%, uh, these will bolt up no problem. And these are still in really good shape. Low mileage uh, rotors for the guy in Hawaii. So he'll be happy. Um, so let's take a look at these these Brimbos over here. Let me put my tools away real quick so I don't drop them or lose them. So let's see, got these. Got my impact over here. 
and ratchet with sockets. Let's put these away real quick, otherwise get a lot more of a mess. Let's just give them a quick wipe down. Is already clean that's fine okay so let me put my tools away real quick sorry if it looks like i'm diddle dabbling this takes a quick minute to put anywhere I still struggle with not putting tools away. Sometimes I'm working on a big project, there'll be like a massive pile of tools and it's just, I haven't lost any, but it's only a matter of time before I lose that magical number 10, you know, socket. So I just try to be good about putting tools away. All right, um, but yeah, let's take a look at these, these Brembos. So I'll put these down here on the sh cart shelf of Dilio. All right, well, so check this out first. This is why I chose these, because they look like they're a really well-matched set. They have the same, uh, you know, pattern as far as assembly. So that's, that's why I chose these. The only real difference is that these are internally plumbed and these are externally plumbed. There's no big difference overall, as long as they're bled properly. But these are, uh, you know, they, cosmetically, they look to be the same design. All right, so let's let's compare these to the rear. You can see the magical big difference. Let me wipe my hands off one more time. Okay. So I mean, you can see how much like bigger. The SRT84 pots are compared to the GTR R34 rears. So, if you look at the difference of pads, I mean, again, it's not knocking these. These are still a great caliber, but you can tell that pad is much smaller than the SRT8. And it's a, it's a dual piston setup, right? Two pot, so still really good caliber. But now you can understand why I'm going to the six front, four rear setup. So pretty exciting. Um, but yeah, you know, that's, that's pretty much it, guys, for tonight. Um, like I said, I'm waiting on the bracketry to adapt the SRT8s or CTSV. I call them SRT8s, but they're all the same. Um, to adapt those to the rear, just like I have on the 89 over there. Um, I don't know what more I can cover at the moment. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and finish getting things cleaned up and take some pictures for the guy to ensure that I got them removed. But, you know, if you have any opinions so far, let me know in the comment section below. But like I said, this is part one of this uh, video and I'll compile it together to be one video once I get the rear bracket. So uh, I'll be back in a moment with the rear brackets and uh, we'll get this wrapped up and finished and we'll go from there. So. Uh, I'll be back in here in a moment.